Welcome to the Hansa Talks, Hansa University of Applied Sciences podcast series. We're committed to supporting our current and prospective international students in their study choice, study success, and career development. We're talking with our students, teachers, researchers, alumni, and professionals. Follow us on Spotify and YouTube and visit our website, hansa.nl. Welcome back to the viewers or to the listeners. And if you think, why welcome back? It's because this is actually the second episode that we're filming for the Mythbusters Engineering. So if you haven't seen the first one yet or haven't listened to the first one yet, then please do so. It is all about the different study programs that you can do at the Hanse, also the differences between them, and maybe you can figure out what of that you like more and what interests you. This podcast, though, this episode will be all about graduating from engineering and, well, what you can do after you finish your bachelor's. I am Jacqueline. I'm your host for today. I am a Hansa University of Applied Sciences alumna, and I've been working in the engineering or tech and engi energy sector for a few years now as a communication specialist. And obviously, since I'm not graduated from engineering, I need to have some special people here who can help me to get through this and give me some insights into what you can do after graduating from engineering. So I got Antons and Dondo with me here. Hi, guys. Hello. Thanks Hi. for being here with me. Of course. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it would be great to hear first from you. Who are you? Let's start with Antons. Yeah. Uh, so my name is Antons. I'm originally from Latvia, but came to Netherlands already like 10 years ago. Uh, I followed the program that I actually liked. I was on those... Um, education fairs and they were presenting Hansa program advanced search applications and I'm not sure whether it still exists I think they merged it into electrical engineering but uh, back in the days it's, it was called advanced sensor applications mm -hmm. uh, was super interesting program so I yeah came to do that and afterwards stayed for doing masters and now working working as a AI consultant at a company uh, Klippa Data North here in Groningen Oh. Cool. Yeah. AI is also something that's very exactly. prominent right now, with yeah. GPT, everything. That's true. So, like, uh, we're having a lot of new clients, um, a lot of things happening. So, some things that you just develop next week can be already a bit outdated, and you're like, okay. <laughs> no, but it's, it's how it is. And we're just trying to catch up with all the latest development, mm -hmm. trying to be, yeah up to date with all the new new recent developments so yeah that's what i'm doing cool nice well, what about you tando <laughs> so i uh, am a lecturer here at the uh, at hansa university of applied sciences uh, my background is in applied physics which i studied here in groningen uh, at Rug. Mm -hmm. um, and then i went into engineering basically i worked at a company as an r&d engineer uh, started leading some project and at a certain point, I decided uh, I would uh, I would love to teach. So uh, I got the opportunity here at the Hansa, which uh, which I'm really enjoying. Where I teach now at the uh, at electrical engineering, uh, we're doing some uh, some development of education there. So uh, so lots of fun stuff. Nice. But does it mean that you're working also with the with that faculty that I was talking about? Like yeah, sure, know? sure. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Probably many of your former teachers are now my colleagues. So uh, okay, yeah. cool, yeah. cool. Yeah. Here. Nice. So kind of having the same roots, but then going into different directions, obviously, yeah. like Tony Moore into teaching, he went then more into... Into industry, first. indeed. Mm. Yeah. yeah. No, but academia is still something that I do have here, so maybe one day we're going to be a colleague. Yeah, nice, you will be very <laughs> welcome. <laughs> 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 nice. I mean, staying in the topic of myth-busting, uh, I'm wondering... Do you guys have sometimes uh, certain cliches or myths that uh, people have of yeah working in engineering or being in engineering that maybe not even true? I don't know. Just like uh, the first thing that com comes in mind is just that it's a uh, hard field. Mm. So people usually, they some people are afraid of going into engineering, though there is, as we discussed just before the podcast, that the... It's a, such a broad field, engineering. Yeah. So it's uh, yeah. very difficult to specify engineering. So I'm doing AI. It's also engineering. Sure. But there is also uh, 
astronomers and they are developing some mechanical components for for telescopes also engineering so there's yeah. really depends on the what is your field of interest and if you're interested in that topic then it's already not that hard yeah and what led you to ai was it something that you were like okay i really want to do it now or this was just like randomly yeah that's actually that's what happened uh throughout the studies because uh the study was formed in such a way that every quarter we had uh, different topics that we were Mm. researching it was a healthcare other other time it was robotics and so you basically throughout all your education can try different things and then i think there was one specific feel uh, there was one specific theme in year three or something like that uh, which was called uh, computer vision uh-huh. and that's uh, that's basically one subset of uh, ai uh, so it's a one one of the tools that you can use in ai and that was Uh, first, where I got very passionate about it, I was like, okay, computer vision, that seems quite interesting. So I also got at first my part-time job while I was working. Uh, while I was studying, I, I, w- I started to work in this uh, computer vision company just to get some real real world experience. Mm. And then started to uh, yeah, continue developing in that field. And then there was also next to computer vision, there is always AI. And there is a, uh, yeah, applying different machine learning algorithms to to teach uh, your systems to recognize certain things, patterns, objects. And yeah, that's where my interest... It's actually, it wasn't that I came to the engineering because of that. Yeah. Just for a lot of like trial and error, figuring exactly. out what so you like. Yeah. That comes with experience. Yeah. Sure. Before you start, you don't know what you're exactly. you want to do, right? Engineering is such a wide field. There, there's lots of opportunities there. Um So that also makes it very difficult to know beforehand what exact field you're going to go into. It's, it's such yeah. a wide field. Not so sure whether you had that when you went to the engineering, whether you knew uh, like uh, whether you knew what, sh- what you want to do. No, I definitely did not know. I just knew coming from high school that I was good at math, uh, <laughs> good at physics, good That's at chemistry. That's what my mom said. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and and I really liked w- really liked physics and I I even doubted whether I wanted to do chemistry at the time because yeah. I really loved it as well. Um, but I really, definitely, just wanted to understand things, just to 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 get yeah get through the bottom of things, to know how how stuff works. That was really my my focus, um, and 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 also to to produce stuff to help improve the world a little bit and yeah. to to be constructive in that sense. So so yeah, engineering really drew my attention in that sense. So yeah, th- that's why I ended up as an engineer in the end. Yeah, you see, it's yeah. it's not happening that you know from the beginning that I want to become like uh. a. Is, uh, yeah, I mean, specific. also in the last episode, we were talking about uh, just mechanical engineering and electrical engineering. And there was also a lot of, it's not just, oh, you learn about components or, oh, you learn code. It's actually, yeah, as you were saying, like chemistry and yeah, physics in it. And you just learn all the different aspects of it and then afterwards can specialize yourself. So yeah. uh, it's nice to see that also then actually results into, yeah, a career, right? So that's also Absolutely. nice. No matter if you go more academia way or if you go more the... Uh, yeah, corporate way. Yeah, yeah. And don't know if as a teacher, do you see certain trends like in your students as to what they like to do right now in the last year? So if it's like if it changes or something as fast as the AI market is changing, <laughs> <laughs> still AI. Yeah, AI is of course very popular now. <laughs> now and, uh, th- uh, AI is definitely one of the trends, right? So, so that's for sure one of the things. Another one that is of course very common is uh, sustainable energy. Uh, sustainable projects and th- this side is really really popular with students as well um, so we have some courses in it but also there are lots of companies for instance we have some students who intern at a company they really specialize in sensors placing them throughout buildings um, and and they made from this this old 1980s building they made like a, a building with a five plus label right so so they really converted the building that was was kind of old into the most well energy efficient building in Europe basically oh, wow. of that age. So yeah. so they did that by placing sensors, by only switching on heating when somebody is there, switching off complete electricity in rooms, stuff like that. So so really yeah, really an interesting company for for people to work in as well. Nice. And yeah. it's also kind of adds to the question I because it sounds like Hansa then provides students with companies like also to to work with. So how would you see Hansa preparing students for yeah the 
wide world of engineering out there. Yeah, yeah. What we do uh, is is uh, uh, having students work at companies for for either half a year or a year, basically. So they yeah. have some kind of internship or a graduation project at the company, and there they they just do a specific assignment in that company. So they really you are really in a company working at a thing that a company does, right? So yeah. so that is the best preparation you can get for <laughs> working in the company in the end, right? So Yeah, true. So so that's uh, that's what we really try to integrate. Even earlier there there are lots of assignments that are coming from companies into the education. So as much as possible, we try to to mimic how stuff goes in the, in, in industry yeah. in the end. Yeah. I also see that a lot uh, when I'm working with technical people and also a lot of my friends are engineers that also graduated from the Hanse or also from other studies. And the people who really excel in their work and who get really nice employment as well are really the people who show some sort of interest in the practical side. Mm -hmm. And it helps as, a, as Hanse, obviously, you kind of, yeah, you could say force people, right? Like in quotation marks. Uh, to to take on that practical they challenge, just highly recommend exactly. Yeah, <laughs> but it's nice because it's it helps you really to build up this portfolio, and yeah. then you can say, hey, I have this yeah. in my CV. I did work with this company already, and I do like have a little bit of an idea already what this is. So you don't really start from scratch. Uh, so. I, you're actually trained for to be a professional, right? You're not trained to be somebody who knows theory very well. So that, that's the goal to to deliver somebody who can work as a professional in in industry and yeah. not to train somebody who knows mathematical formulas or something. I mean, that's not the goal, uh, the goal here. So, yeah. yeah, makes sense. And uh, Anton, when you started working, so you were saying you're working now at Klippa, so it's also like a Groningen company. Yeah, yeah. they actually, last year, uh, they won this Undernehmers Prize. Mm. So it's a, it's a very prestigious prize. And it's, uh, I think, for the first time in uh, Groningen history uh, when it's the software company won it. Oh, so cool! That's Congrats! Actually, yeah, thank you very much. Uh, <laughs> nice. So it was a, it was a definitely a big thing. And right now we do have this prize standing uh, on our shelf. Mm, cool. Uh, but indeed, so the market has uh, changed so much. So in the past, when I was uh, graduating, I was really looking for okay, what are the interesting companies? Okay, they all located in Amsterdam. Let's try to apply. Mm -hmm. Then you open LinkedIn or something, and then you see already three hundred like ap uh, applicants. Okay, good luck to me, but you still apply, but then competition is very high. Yeah. And around Groningen, competition is lower. And in the past, it was not as mm, as many opportunities, I would say, as, as it is right now. Right now, you don't need to go anywhere. So Groningen has so many things to offer. Yeah. And the cities around Groningen also. There are so many companies right now located on the north, not only Groningen, but also... Know, Assen, Roden, Drachten, all yeah. those cities, they're they just full of companies. And that's actually, yeah, that's, that's super nice. Yeah, also, I did a bit of sleuthing. I have this, like, little magic sheet <laughs> <laughs> where I put down some stats and figures that I looked out. And specifically for engineering in Groningen, it's actually really interesting because I saw that the UVV, so, like, the unemployment yeah. agency in the Netherlands, they have uh, in Groningen alone almost two and a half thousand open technical vacancies. So mm -hmm. it's like two thousand three hundred forty-seven, if you wanna <laughs> know the exact number. <laughs> yeah, uh, thanks. yeah, and I think, and then if you look though at the current uh, work or labor markets and how many people are unemployed officially and get unemployment benefits, there are only one one hundred seventy-three electrical engineers. And other engineering fields, which includes mechanical and a lot of others, uh, as we talked about, there are a lot of fields, uh, includes 886 people. So it's basically, yeah, less than a thousand people unemployed currently, yeah. but there are almost two and a half thousand vacancies. So the market is quite wide and there are a lot of opportunities to branch out in. Yeah, so but you really also don't know fully why they are unemployed. They could be that they are just trying things out. Maybe they are just going into entrepreneurship. Could also be, because yeah. Because like sure. a... But just Five shows, yeah. yeah. I, f I think it's interesting that it kind of that the, that there's so much out there that you can try out. Absolutely. And yeah. also, the province is obviously supporting a lot of uh, those things as well. Like, for example, they have the uh, let's test my Dutch here, the <laughs> Groningen at Work Outfoodings Program from 2020 to 2023. Very so it's good. like a <laughs> <laughs> it's also like a program where they're trying to build a sustainable and circular economy in the province of Groningen. Yeah. And the, one of the main pillars is also to create like sustainable labor. And that means not only working also for sustainable energies, which is really 
like uh, yeah popular right now, but also to yeah create an environment where you can develop yourself as a profession where you don't have to go necessarily to places where it's more competitive like the yeah. Randstad, so Amsterdam, Utrecht, and yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we have lots of companies that always tell us, ah, give us more engineers, please. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> they can like place two or three engineers for 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 everybody who graduates here. Yeah. Lots of them don't even place vacancies anymore because they know they won't get filled anyway. Just yeah. l- let's fill this this first one first and let's see if we can get another one after that. So Yeah, yeah definitely broad market and it's nice yeah. if you don't studied here as well, then you can directly mostly start already with working in companies. Yeah. At our company what we do have uh, at least what I noticed that all our vacancies, they're always there. So we always looking for AI people, yeah. always looking for, uh, I don't know, for content market here. But like uh, just because their market actually can always supply those. So just like, why should we always uh, post this new vacancy uh, online? Yeah. We should always have them. And we as a scale up grow insanely. Yeah. Every, every year we just like uh, expand. And yeah, those vacancies are always there. If you open our website, you see pretty much every yeah. position that we have. Yeah. We are <laughs> looking for someone like this. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's really the story for a lot of companies now. Uh, yeah. yeah, I, I mean, I unfortunately I worked for a company that d- did go bankrupt, and uh, a lot of uh, people there, the well, majority, were engineers. And I, like a week or two after it's like kind of started, I was asking people like, "Hey, how are you doing?" Are you looking for something new already? And a lot of engineers, especially data science or like software as well, they're like, oh, I already have like talks of like two, three companies. I, yeah, I already have even yeah. an offer if I want to. So I take it slow just to find the right thing for me. And it's uh, incredible. It's, it's amazing. Yeah. Yeah, 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 absolutely. But next to doing, I mean, immediately jumping into working, uh, I know that you both guys made a master's. Also, Anton, you made a master's as well. Yeah. Um, yeah, t- can you tell me more about that? Like, why did you decide to do master's, not immediately working? Yeah, so there could be uh, several reasons. For me, I think uh, the main reason was that at my bachelor's, I already knew which direction I wanted to go. Mm-hmm. And there was actually a really nice master's just following uh, just my interests. And so I decided to go for that. As also, on top of that, uh, master's gives you some extra uh, network, like a... It expands your professional professional network, yeah. so which you cannot like. <laughs> so you really uh, that's something that I was looking for to expand my network and also gain some essential skills that I think uh, would help me in my career. Uh, but it's not necessarily that you have to do masters because, like some people, uh, if they're into entrepreneurship and then after the bachelor's they think, okay, I want to try, maybe fail but that's going to be experience I'm going to get. So that's also a possibility. Other people just want to go directly and work uh, and then maybe after some time uh, do masters. Though I have to warn that it's... uh, it might be quite difficult to go from the industry to back to studying because, first of all, you have uh, already stable income, mm. very comfortable. You like uh, you don't want to lose it. Uh, that, but then the habit that you have, like you can return after work and you have a uh, watch Netflix or enjoy time with your uh, friends. Now you have to come back to studying and yeah. or like uh, sleepless nights. <laughs> so just think twice if you want to make this gap. So yeah, yeah maybe, maybe just go directly from bachelor's to masters. That's and then uh, as su- like. Because you still remember how to how to study. Yeah. Yeah. What yeah. about you, Tondo? Like, who would you advise to do a master's to? Yeah, I, I think indeed people are interested a bit more in a, a little bit more analytical skills or sometimes deeper specific yeah. fields, right? Mm-hmm. So, so it's generally a master's. You go into a th- I think m- deeper analysis, and in engineering. Usually on the bachelor levels, you 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 know how to create stuff, yeah. right? You really know well how to analyze the basics um, and create create lots of good products, etc. So you're trained perfectly for that. Um, but if you want to do, I don't know, a bit more complicated stuff or something on a specific topic, usually it, it requires a bit more 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 yeah. specialization. So so there's either the specialization or if you you have some some more general masters which are a bit broader, and there you really go into the yeah, more analysis skills, I would say. Yeah. So, so if you want to do really 
I would say a bit more researchy kind of things. A master helps. Yeah. yeah. But then it's also like uh, if you have this thought in the background that maybe one day I'm gonna end up in a academia, mm. then uh, masters is actually essential thing to have. Yeah. Because maybe even like uh, you need to go for the PhD later on. Hmm. Could be. That's yeah. possible. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, I, f- I think also. Um, when I was looking around as to like what type of jobs are right now on the rise, also like in the Netherlands, but also Europe wide, uh, a lot of them are very specific. Like mm-hmm. there were sometimes sustainability engineers, for example. I don't know what that is, but uh, apparently that is a function that is on the rise. And it's actually quite interesting as well. So it's a really good segue to my great sheets. Next statistic. <laughs> it's, yeah, it's the actually, and that one is uh, yeah. Netherlands wide. And that's that. The LinkedIn jobs on the rise 2023 in the Netherlands, they have uh, 20 job titles that grew the fastest over the past five years and that are supposed to probably get even bigger. And out of those 20 jobs, seven, so 35%, are actually in the engineering field, mainly due to the rise of the AI and digitalization that we have, but also after the pandemic, obviously, a lot of it uh, kind of took its course. And I also, and that is not a statistic, that is my own belief and that is my own observation i think that with uh the energy transition Mm -hmm. a lot of processes need to be made more circular a lot of processes need to be more sustainable which requires you to actually also yeah re-engineer things in every aspect no matter if you are building windmills or if you're trying to make your manufacturing plant more sustainable so you need more people for that it's a huge huge task before us right if if you want to (laughs) We basically change your entire economy, your entire energy system. It's it's really huge. Yeah. So, so lots of engineering is needed there. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, and I think that's also in the Netherlands right now. It's a market for innovators. So you're also mentioning like entrepreneurship. That's a big thing because you get a lot of support from it from the government, from like the provinces. Like and all yeah. different provinces support on different levels. Some some more, some less. But then I haven't heard that. Uh, there are provinces in Netherlands that do not support. No, uh, they <laughs> all all support. They all encourage. Like, if you have a great idea, just find your, uh, yeah, organization that will support, and you'll, I think you'll find it quite yeah. easy. Yeah, yeah. I mean, in the yeah. Netherlands, it's on Groningen right now. They, you know, they do a lot of hydrogen. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah. but that is mostly, I feel like, yeah, I'm on the PhD, PhD level, yeah. so that you kind of do more research into it, but it slowly turns into this thing of you see more hydrogen cars, there are now hydrogen buses and public yeah. transport, so... Yeah, we actually at the Hans, we also have now a, a minor hydrogen. Yeah. So, so that's oh, one nice. of the things we can choose as, as students as well. So we're really, uh, the, in the province of Groningen, indeed, they're focusing on hydrogen as Hans, so we're also including it more and more in the curriculums as well. So uh, yeah. yeah, open to all engineering students. So uh, yeah. No, that's great. You see, then you can also already kind of get a head start then in the market in Groningen because yeah. you know all about engineering and like hydrogen and engineering. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Amazing. Yeah. Well, thanks so much, you guys, for joining me here and telling me a bit more about yeah what you can actually do with the skills you acquire. Yeah, you're welcome. Uh, yeah, very nice to do. It was uh, great to hear from you guys and also... Uh, I hope that you just continue, yeah, inspiring also students to continue in that way and also to inspire people to use AI. I'm really curious how that will hmm. develop well, as I'll well. Try, yeah. I'll try my best. Yeah. Yeah. Hopefully we'll be all still employed next year. <laughs> <laughs> Please, <laughs> yes. <laughs> no, 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 I have to, like, I have to, at the end of this episode, I just want to, like, uh, uh, break this myth that Everyone is afraid that AI is going to come and replace everyone with their, with our current jobs. It's actually not the case. No. It creates way more jobs than it's replacing. Maybe some jobs are like uh, modernized. They change, mm-hmm. transform. But then at the end of the day, we actually need even more people that understand technology. So yeah. Yeah. please, engineers, join our our uh, fleet, our our yeah. army yeah. of engineers. Our You're welcome yeah. to join. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone's <Yeah>. welcome. <laughs> Absolutely. Amazing. Well, thanks also a lot to our listeners and viewers for joining in again. And who knows, maybe I'll see you in our next episode.